Welcome to this third video about Poisson regression. In this lecture, we see how we can use an explanatory variable on a categorical scale in Poisson regression. We'll focus on how to interpret the coefficients of such a model. In the first video about Poisson regression, our model included an explanatory variable that was treated as a continuous variable, where the estimated parameter b1 represented the slope of the log count. However, in this video, we'll analyze counts from two different groups. The explanatory variable in this example is therefore on a categorical scale. To illustrate how Poisson regression works with variables on a categorical scale, I will here use the following example on metastatic lymph nodes. When cancer cells from the primary tumor start to spread to other parts of the body, it is called metastasis. Metastatic lymph nodes are lymph nodes that contain cancer cells that have spread from the primary tumor. In this example, one has detected two metastatic lymph nodes. The human body contains about 500 lymph nodes. The number of metastatic lymph nodes is an important prognostic factor as it is associated with the progression of the cancer disease. Suppose we like to compare the number of metastatic lymph nodes between two cancer treatments, A and B. For the purpose of this video, I will only use a very small dataset. In total, four patients are on treatment A, whereas four patients are on treatment B. Let's plot the number of metastatic lymph nodes found in each of the eight patients. For example, this patient is on treatment A and has seven metastatic lymph nodes. And this patient is also on treatment A and has two metastatic lymph nodes. Whereas this patient is on treatment B and has three metastatic lymph nodes. From the first lecture, we know that the Poisson regression is based on an exponential model. We also know that the Poisson regression uses a log link function so that the right hand side of this equation only includes linear terms. When the explanatory variable has a categorical scale with only two categories, we need to recode the two groups A and B to ones and zeros in order to calculate the expected count. For example, let's set the treatment group A as our baseline group. We can therefore rename our variable treatment to treatment B. The variable treatment B can only take two values, either 0 or 1. We can think of 0 as no and 1 as yes. If the variable treatment B is set to 0, it means that the model predicts the counts of the ones on treatment A. And if the variable treatment B is set to 1, it means that the model predicts the counts of the ones on treatment B. If you set this variable to zero, we see that this term becomes zero. And the right hand side then only includes the intercept. This equation therefore represents the log of the expected number of metastatic lymph nodes for the ones on treatment A. However, if you set treatment B to one, this term can be simplified to just B1. This equation therefore represents the expected log count of the number of metastatic lymph nodes for the patients on treatment B. If we fit the Poisson regression model to the data, we'll obtain the following estimated parameter values. We see that both coefficients are significantly different from zero since their associated p-value is smaller than the general significance level of 0 0.05. However, note that the p-values from GLM models might differ between different statistical software tools, because different software tools might use different types of methods to compute the test statistic. These p-values were computed based on the GLM function in the software R. Let's try to interpret the values of these coefficients. Let's start to interpret the estimated value for B0. If we plug in 1.447 in this equation, 
we see that B0 can be interpreted as the expected log count of the number of metastatic lymph nodes for patients on treatment A. If you take e to the power b0, we see that the expected count for the ones on treatment A is 4.25. This value actually corresponds to the average number of metastatic lymph nodes for the ones on treatment A. e to the power of b0 therefore corresponds to the expected count of our baseline group when all the explanatory variables are set to 0. In our case, this means that we set the variable treatment B to zero. We'll now try to interpret the estimated value of the parameter B1. We plug in the value for B1 here. This value tells us the expected log count for the ones in group B is about 1.22 less than the log count for the ones in group A. If you also plug in the value for B0, then we can calculate the expected log count for the ones on treatment B, which is 0.223. If you take e to the power 0.223, we see that the expected count of the number of metastatic lymph nodes is 1.25 for the ones on treatment B. This value corresponds to the average number of metastatic lymph nodes for the ones on treatment B. If you take e to the power of the estimated value B1, we get the multiplicative factor of 0 0.294. Remember from the first lecture about Poisson regression that the multiplicative factor is also called the incidence rate ratio. Thus, if you multiply the expected count for group A by 0 0.294, we'll get the expected count of group B, since 1 minus 0 0.294 is 0 0.706, we can say that there are on average 70.6% fewer metastatic lymph nodes for patients on treatment B compared to the ones on treatment A. So far, we have not got any additional information from the Poisson regression model. We could have calculated the average number of metastatic lymph nodes in the two groups easily without the use of the Poisson model. However, the Poisson regression model tells us if the value of B1 is significantly different from zero. If we would use the significance level of 0 0.05, we see that the p-value is less than this significance level. We can thereby draw the conclusion that the estimated value of b1 is significantly different from zero. And since the estimated value is negative, we can draw the conclusion that the estimated value of b1 is significantly less than zero. We can therefore say that the expected count of metastatic lymph nodes is significantly lower for patients on treatment B compared to the patients on treatment A. We can also use the coefficients to draw a regression curve in this plot. If we define the groups as 1 and 0 on the x-axis, we can think of e to the power of b0 as the intercept on the y-axis when the x-axis is equal to 0. Note that the intercept corresponds to the mean count of group A. In contrast, e to the power b0 plus b1 results in the expected count for group B, which corresponds to the mean count of this group. We'll now discuss why we should not use the t-test or linear regression for count data. When you see this type of data, where we like to compare two means based on independent observations, it is tempting to use a simple unpaired t-test. However, since we are dealing with count data, which can only take non-negative integer values, and is expected to follow a Poisson distribution instead of a normal distribution, a t-test would not be appropriate. This is the reason why we should use Poisson regression instead of a t-test when we analyze count data. Remember from the first lecture that in addition to independence, 
and a fixed size of the time interval or a fixed space, the assumption that the variance is equal to the mean must be fulfilled when we use Poisson regression. Since the mean count in group A is 4.25, we assume that the variance is also 4.25. And since the mean count is 1.25 in group B, we assume that the variance is also 1.25 in this group. If we calculate the variance of the counts in group A, we see that the variance is equal to the mean. And if we calculate the variance of the counts in group B, we see that it is a bit higher than the mean. However, this might be due to sampling variation. A simple rule of thumb says that the variance should not be more than twice as large as the mean. Based on this rule, the observed variance does not deviate too much from the mean to reject the assumption. However, if we cannot assume that the variance is equal to the mean, one alternative is to use the negative binomial model instead, which we'll discuss in another lecture. Finally, we'll have a look at an example where we have three groups instead of just two. Note that we now have a third group of patients which are on treatment C. The following model was fitted to the data, where we again use group A as our baseline group. These are the same estimated parameters as in our previous example. If we take E to the power of these coefficients, we get these values. This coefficient represents the expected count in group A, and if we multiply 4.25 by 0 0.29, we get the expected count in group B. And if we multiply 4.25 by 1.53, we get the expected count in group C. Based on this multiplicative factor, we see that the expected count in group C is 53% larger than the expected count in group A. Since the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, we can conclude that there is no significant difference in the mean count between group A and group C. To test if there is an overall difference between the three treatments, similar to what we test with an ANOVA, we could compare our model with the treatments against the model with just an intercept. To compare GLM models, we need to compute the likelihood and the deviance, which we will do in the next lecture. This was the end of this lecture about using categorical variables in Poisson regression. In the next lecture, we will see how we can calculate the likelihood and the deviance in order to compare two Poisson regression models.